Hello everyone. The Bible says that the salvation history or God's plan to save the human race began when the first humans sinned and their sin corrupted the whole of creation. Since then, God gradually and over thousands of years had been revealing himself in successive stages to humanity by making covenants with Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David and all their descendants to restore their broken relationship with him. Although they had broken God's covenants and angered him, God declared to the prophet Jeremiah that he would fulfill all his promises, especially the promise of sending a Redeemer who would be a descendant of Adam and Eve and that he would be a permanent king who would sit on the throne of David forever. About 550 years after Jeremiah, an angel of the Lord appeared to some shepherds who were watching over their flocks at night in the field outside the town of Bethlehem in Judea and announced the birth of Jesus saying, A Savior has been born and that he is Christ the Lord. During his first visit to the synagogue in his hometown Nazareth, at the age of 12, Jesus read the well-known messianic prophecy from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, give sight to the blind, that the oppressed go free, and proclaim a year of favor from the Lord, and told them that he was the long-awaited Messiah. At the age of 30, after being baptized by John in the Jordan River, Jesus began to preach around the Sea of Galilee. And he continued to preach in synagogues and marketplaces, forgave sinners and healed every disease and sickness among the people, and consequently attracted many followers. However, after three years of public life and ministry, he was betrayed and abandoned by his own disciples was tried and condemned by the Jewish elders and tortured to death on a cross by Roman soldiers. He was innocent and yet he was crucified on the cross and died a humiliating and shameful death which was then the highest form of punishment reserved for the worst of criminals. Friends, on the day Jesus was crucified, many people stood watching but they no longer looked up to him the way they used to. Some people such as Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary and Mary Magdalene and others were greatly saddened. Some people assumed that Jesus was just as guilty as the criminals hanging on his right and on his left. From today's text we learn that there were religious leaders and rulers who sneered at Jesus saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. There were soldiers who mocked Jesus and said to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. They called Jesus the king of the Jews because Pilate had put the inscription above his head to let everybody know that Jesus was the king of the Jews whether the Jews believed or accepted it or not. One criminal hanging on the cross next to Jesus reviled him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked the first and said, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing wrong. Friends, the second criminal realized that while their punishment was justified for their crimes, the punishment for Jesus was unjust. Moreover, recognizing the mercy and love of Jesus for him and many other sinners, he humbled himself and said to Jesus to remember him when he would come into his kingdom. In other words, the criminal looked forward to Jesus coming again in his kingly glory and with dignity and power. Since the criminal sought it, Jesus forgave him and said, 
Today, you will be with me in paradise. Friends, what is the message for us? God's word is the most essential for our spiritual growth and for our intimate and personal relationship with him. As Christians, we could be ignorant of many things, but we must not be ignorant of the knowledge of God. If we want to grow as Christians, as St. Peter says, we must grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. St. John in his Gospel writes that knowing God and knowing Jesus Christ whom he has sent is eternal life. Friends, our Lord Jesus continues the mission of salvation through his body, the Church and he has commissioned his servants to guide all people to a fuller understanding of his word. During the past liturgical or church year, we have been reading and reflecting on Jesus' life, his teachings and miracles according to the Gospel of Luke. Today, as we end the liturgical year with the celebration of the Feast of Christ the King, it is only fitting that we assess our knowledge and understanding of Jesus. If we really know Christ, it will be manifested in our character and conduct. So, after having read and meditated on Jesus' whole life and works, or after knowing Jesus, or after having been a Christian for many years, do we, just like the priests, elders, rulers, criminals, passers-by and unbelievers, revile, insult, curse and challenge Jesus, and reject Jesus as our King? Or do we just like the repentant criminal truly repent of our sins and believe in the Lord Jesus and joyfully accept and boldly declare that He is the King of our life, our thoughts and actions, and He is the King of our whole being? Today you and I, as believers, can acknowledge that very fact. The very moment we accept Jesus Christ as our own Lord and Savior and live according to his word, we are saved and we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.